the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We pray together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Today is the first Sunday of Advent. Happy New Year to you. Um, and we, each Sunday of Advent, we traditionally light a candle, one of the purple candles, to count down the, the, the days, the, the weeks until Christmas Day. So, we need to light the first candle. Would you like to come and do this? And while you're lighting a candle, this one here. Hopefully you've all got your bits of paper. God of Abraham and Sarah. That's it. No, let this one out. And all the patriarchs of old. You are our father too. Your love is revealed to us in Jesus Christ. Son of God and son of David. Help us to prepare to celebrate his birth. To make our hearts ready for the Holy Spirit. To make his home among us. We ask this through Jesus Christ. The light who is coming into the world. Amen. Lord Jesus, light of the world, in David's city of Bethlehem, born like him to be a king, be born in our hearts at Christmas, be king of our lives today. Amen. And we're now going to try and sing something, um, as is often the case with things I'm trying to introduce. The tune will be familiar, but the words are not. I found this the other day. Um, a hymn written about the Advent candles, so it seemed an appropriate moment to sing. It should all be on the bits, the other bit of paper. Hopefully, <coughs> if you haven't all got one out of them. Right, I think we are as ready as we're ever going to be. bring to mind those occasions where we have fallen short. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins. 
to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. <clears throat> Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As it is Advent, we traditionally don't sing the Gloria until Christmas Day. Almighty God, as your kingdom dawns, turn us from the darkness of sin to the light of holiness, that we may be ready to meet you in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And our first reading comes from the book of Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord when I will fulfil the promise that I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days, and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus was baptised, the Holy Spirit descended upon him in a bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, with you I am well pleased. Jesus was about thirty years old when he began his work. He was the son, as was thought, of Joseph, son of Eli, son of Mathat, son of Levi, son of Melchi, son of Janai, son of Joseph, son of Matthias, son of Amos, son of Nahum, son of Esli, son of Nagai, son of Math, son of Matthias, son of Semine, son of Josek, son of Joda, son of Jonan, son of Reza, son of Zerubbabel, son of Sheattle, son of Neri, son of Melchi, son of Adai, son of Kossa, son of Elderman, son of Ur, son of Joshua, son of Eleazar, son of Joram, son of Mathat, 
son of Levi, son of Simeon, son of Judah, son of Joseph, son of Jonan, son of Ilikim, son of Meli, son of Mena, son of Matthiah, son of Nathan, son of David, son of Jesse, son of Obed, son of Boaz, son of Salah, son of Nashon, son of Amidad, son of Admin, son of Ami, son of Hezron, son of Hezron, son of Judah, son of Jacob, son of Job, Isaac, son of Abraham, son of Terah, son of Nahor, son of Serog, son of Ru, son of Peleg, son of Eber, son of Shelah, son of Canaan, son of Arphaxad, son of Shem, son of Noah, son of Lamech, son of Methuselah, son of Enoch, son of Jared, son of Mahali, son of Canaan, son of Enos, son of Seth, son of Adam. Son of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the living God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. To be fair, the reading we've just heard from Luke's Gospel is not one that we would normally hear on a Sunday. It is not really the one set for today. But I thought that it was important for us to hear it once in a while. This is Luke's genealogy of Jesus, um, starting with that he was son, as was thought, of Joseph. There is a separate genealogy in um, Matthew's Gospel and it disagrees at some points. And from ancient times the assumption has been that one of these two genealogies is what they understood to be the genealogy of Joseph, Jesus' stepfather, um, because the Gospel tells us that um, he had no natural father. And Luke's Gospel, the one we've just heard, is really more um, the genealogy of Mary. Um, and so where it talks about Joseph being the son of Eli, he's it's really referring to him being um, the son-in-law of Eli, Eli's heir, because um, Mary, um, as his only child, um, is the one who um, would inherit everything, and so the son-in-law inherits everything through her. The first two generations leading back from um, Jesus in this genealogy are names that will probably not be familiar from, for us. And in a way, this is, should not be surprising. Um, the hints in the Gospel is that Jesus is born into a very ordinary background. He is not one of the um, priestly families of Israel that is really prominent. He's not a rich landowner. He is not from um, someone who is important in society at the time. He is born into a very ordinary family and he is born in very difficult circumstances. We will obviously look at a bit. More to all that as we get to Christmas. But the fact that Jesus was born into an ordinary family means we shouldn't be surprised if we don't know who his grandparents were, or his great-grandparents, or those generations going back. They were ordinary people, living ordinary lives, um, and not very important, not key to some of the um, documents we were reading in the Bible, some of the stories we were reading in the Bible. It's only really when we get back to Zerubbabel that we get a name that we may or may not recognise. Zerubbabel was the man who re rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem um, when the people of God came back from exile. And then there's a number of generations um, that we get while the people are in exile. And then we get back to the kingdom of Israel. And we get back to um, Nathan, son of David, son of Jesse, son of Obed, son of Boaz. Um, David is obviously um, a massive figure in Israel, the history of the people of God in Israel. Um, he is the king to which they are all looking back to. Um, and often Jesus is being described as Messiah, as the one who will restore the kingdom of David. And this is what people sort of expected in his time. The Messiah would come to restore the kingdom of David and put them back in power again. This is where they're looking back to. 
That little bit of genealogy ends up with son of Boaz. Boaz, um, you may remember, is from the story of Ruth. Um, we talked about this a few years ago in a whole series of readings. We looked at the whole book of Ruth. Um, but Boaz is this figure who redeems Ruth, um, rescues her from poverty, and marries her, and so starts the line that ends with David. He is, in, in his own way, a very significant figure. But back from Boaz, we go back again um, to son of Judah, son of Jacob, son of Isaac, son of Abraham. All the people of God, all Jews at that time, would regard themselves as one of the 12 tribes of Israel, descended from the 12 sons of Jacob. Jacob, the son of Isaac, the son of Abraham. Um, David's line came out of the house of Judah, so it's not surprising that Jesus' line goes back to Judah and ultimately to Abraham. Keep going a little bit further and jump a few more generations, you get to Noah, a very familiar name, and ultimately to Adam, who is described as the Son of God. Adam, the first person who is brought into being by God, the one from which all humanity is supposed to descend. Ultimately, he has, um, according to biblical tradition, to be the ancestor of all, but he has to be the ancestor of Jesus. Some people really like family history, some people really like genealogy, it's a big business um, in the world today, other people find it quite tedious. So what is the point of this reading, and why did I think it was important for us to read it today? Um, it's not just so I can pick out some of those names and try and sound clever because I can recognise them, I'm sure many of you will recognise them as well. It's more that Luke, in his Gospel, felt it was important to show how Jesus fitted into that history of the people of God. That history of them coming back from exile, before that having the kingdom which was ultimately destroyed, and before that all descending from those 12 sons of Jacob, um, the ones who went into exile in Egypt, and ultimately back to Abraham. A lot of Hebrew tradition, a lot of Jewish tradition comes back to the promises made by God to Abraham. The promise that the whole world would be redeemed through one of his descendants. The, problem, the promise that at the point he was an old man with no children, that he would have a son and he would be the ancestor of many nations and his descendants would be as numerous as the grains of sand. Um, all those promises come out in Abraham, Abraham being the, the man who left his home and travelled where God called him to travel. Today, um, being the first Sunday of Advent, we will have begun by lighting an Advent candle to remember the role that the patriarchs, the patriarchs Abraham and Sarah, uh, Isaac and the rest, had in the story of God. The story obviously starts with Adam in the Garden of Eden. Um, Adam and Eve then eat from the Tree of Knowledge and are expelled from the Garden of Eden. Over the generations, their descendants fall further and further away from God. Um, their languages are mixed up after the Tower of Babel and ultimately much of humanity is wiped out in a great flood, pushing us back to Noah and his family. And then again, humanity expands. And once again, generation after generation begin to fall further and further away from God. And in Abraham, God makes his promise that in the future, at some point, one of his descendants will be chosen to rebuild that connection between God and humanity. As Christians, we believe that promise was fulfilled in the person of Jesus and his birth, which is what we'll be celebrating at Christmas. Luke, to remind us of those promises, to pro remind us of the great history building up to this moment of the birth of Jesus, gives us this genealogy to stitch together all those little bits of story that are predicting the birth of the Messiah. 
to show us that Jesus is part of that story. He's not someone who comes in from outside. He is someone who is intrinsically part of that story. He is fulfilling God's promises made all those generations ago to the patriarchs. And that promise began to be fulfilled with his birth, which is what we will be celebrating at the end of this month. there must be love to bind all together and complete the whole. Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And I will also be with you. We now sing together the hymn, Angel Voices Ever Singing Around Her Throne of Light.
gathered hopes of generations remind us to get ourselves ready so that Christ's return will be a day of excitement and of great joy. As we think about the fulfilment of all things today, let us speak with the God of our making. We pray that we will all be ready to meet God face to face, whenever that will be. Lord, show us how to live and the courage to go forward. We pray that all who need and advise may be led and advised by you, so that all our decisions are in line with your compassion. Lord, show us how to live and give us the courage to go forward. We pray that our families and neighbours may be brought into contact with the one true living God and know his affection for them. Lord, show us how to live and give us the courage to go forward. We pray that those hurt by injustice may know your support and that the frail and timid may know your encouragement and reassurance. Lord, show us how to live and give us the courage to go forward. We pray that those moving into eternity through the gate of death may be welcomed and their grieving loved ones comforted. Lord, show us how to live and give us the courage to go forward. We look with hope to the fulfilment of all you have done and offer you our thanks and praise for all your love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. is all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you all and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.